Almost everyone has heard the saying, knowledge is power. Other than the textbook definition of the phrase, does anyone actually know what it means to reiterate this line? Anyone know why it's said? How exactly would one acquire power through gaining knowledge? Well, that's the thing though. Knowledge can be acquired through various means, through curiosity, trials, study, force, trickery, or even sacrifice. In Castlevania, power is exuded by many characters and for different means. One could argue that in many cases that power went hand in hand with an individual whose values coincide with the fondness for gaining more knowledge. These individuals embody the quote, but rarely does one become a living personification of it. In a Castlevania show, that role went to none other than the most interesting man in all of Wallachia, Count Saint Germain. Let's get it. Yo, yo. Saint Germain, like many characters on the show, is a returning character from the gaming franchise. Like Isaac and Hector, his debut or appearance took place in the title game Curse of Darkness. While he does share relevance in the games with the Forge Masters, he also shares a unique factor to his likeness with another important character in the series. Like Dracula, Saint Germain is one of the only two characters on the show based on a true historical figure in world history, a mysterious figure who is said to be of Jewish faith and of Portuguese descendants. In other origin tales, it is stated that his birthplace is the Italian village of San Germano, explaining the name he was commonly known as, Count Saint Germain. And so yes, Saint Germain is not his real name, but just one of the many hats or pseudonyms he was known by, such as Marquis de Montferrat, Comte Bellamel, Chevalier Schoening, Count Weldon, Count Soltikoff, Graf Trawalski, and Prince Rakoschi, son of Francis II Rakoschi of Transylvania. Which was heavily reflected in episode 4 of season 4, it's a credit to the writers of the show to not only reference the game version, but also do the necessary research into the figure of Saint Germain and display him with more historical accuracy. Yet other than being an enigmatic figure of 1700s who achieved notoriety in European high society, Saint Germain is well known and revered in the spiritual community. He was considered a mystic, philosopher, social influencer, and most importantly, an ascended master. A sort of Christ-like figure or a supernatural being labeled as a master of the ancient wisdom. As an ascended master, Saint Germain was a well-known alchemist and a member of many secret occult societies, leading to being believed to have many magical powers such as the ability to teleport, levitate, walk through walls, reincarnation, time travel, and to inspire people by telepathy. Speaking of time travel, this would lead us to the references to his role in Curse of Darkness as a time traveler and a member of the Time Watchers organization. And thus, here we can look at the direct influences, similarities, and differences between three avenues of world history, the games, and the animated series. What seems to be the common denominator between all three is that Saint Germain is a mysterious individual who is highly intelligent, proficient in magic, a traveler, and always seems to be directly or indirectly associated with occult groups. As stated before, the fact that he held many titles and offered his services to high society throughout Europe is in direct relation to the historical figure, which I presume would mean he also is multilingual due to serving different royalty across national borders. In between that sequence though, we come upon a time where his outfit was an exact reference to the Curse of Darkness game sporting a top hat, red blazer, black vest, white gloves, and pants. Like in the games, he is neither a villain or a hero and speaks with a British accent. Lastly, his story in Castlevania also seems to intertwine or cross paths with the character of death. The differences lie mainly in his appearance. While similar color coordination for his outfit, but with different articles of clothing, he also seems to be older than portrayed in the games and seems to lack fighting capabilities previously in Curse of Darkness. His ability to manipulate time and travel between spaces is kept, but unlike being able to summon portals at will, he had to acquire certain magical items to access the infinite corridor in order to travel between space and time. Lastly, in relation to being able to use the infinite corridor, his motivations went from being a member of the Time Watchers to watch over and preserve the flow of time to simply a man desperately trying to regain love lost. Making his debut appearance in the animated show in Season 3, Saint Germain is in character as meant to be eloquent in his presentation and speech, conniving and always finding a way to be in the know, 
or involved in any and everyone's business. Everyone in Lindenfell seems to be weary of him and his silver tongue, especially the female merchants in the marketplace. Yet, he instantly takes interest in our favorite couple soon as they make their big interest in town, which ends up revealing his ability to see the finer details the following day as he introduces himself to Trevor, instantly recognizing his family crest under his trench coat which was meant to disguise him. His method of acquiring access to knowledge is reminiscent of his practice, following the principle of equivalent exchange, making a gesture of good faith in exchange for something in return to him. First tried with Trevor by paying for his breakfast and offering to pay to repair his clothes and throw a sleight of hand to provide him with soap and water. In exchange, he expects to know what he is doing in Lindenfell, but unfortunate for him, Trevor is not so easily swayed and cuts the conversation short. Yet immediately finds success bribing Prior Salop moments after by offering to lend his scribing and multilingual talents and offers knowledge of Dracula in order to have access to the Priory. Coaching himself to move forward after, we as the audience know this was a crucial step into achieving his end goal. Once he makes it inside, his investigation begins and he immediately recognizes the new stench in the church, but more importantly, the symbol etched on the wall and on the monk's sleeves, making a distinction of how far gone they are. Everything he detects seems to be pointing in one direction. The upside down statue, an alchemic symbol for sulfur, which all refer to hell. His opportunity to scout deeper presents itself until Salar intercepts him, but fortunately allows him the pleasure of being acquainted with the fellow magician and Cypher. Saint-Germain is incredibly in the know, being able to recount knowledge and history that most people are unaware of or simply forgot. For instance, being well informed on the Belmont clan and the speakers, going even further by recollecting knowledge of the church's history with Dracula, reciting the creed of the alchemist society, and being able to list the exploits of Varney and Dragan to their faces without hesitation. While he and Sypha make out the alchemist symbols in the side of the house and reencountering Trevor, he is forced to explain his interest in accessing the Priory and how it houses a portal to the Infinite Corridor. That same night, he dreams of his last encounter with the Corridor, opening different portals to different dimensions and different times and possibly on different planets, waking up to him sleeping in a barn. And ironic how he criticized Trevor for his stench, but he is the one sleeping amongst the animals. He must have sacrificed much of his resources in going through the lengths to revert to his old ways of being a proper individual in order to regain what matters most to him in the end. After confirming that a night creature is housed in a church, he reports it to our dynamic duo and thus he accompanies them during the night of the harvest to inevitably gain access to the corridor with the help of Trevor and Sypha. Once back into the corridor, he comes upon another alchemist who tests his dedication to the craft by questioning if he is willing to do what it takes to bring his beloved back. And thus he'll have to forsake his morals and commit completely to alchemy by willingly sacrificing human souls to tap into the power of death. Thus creating a rebus in order to control the corridor and she gives him a key that allows him to leave at will. Once back into the world, Saint Germain has now been set on a darker path. And for the first time in his life he is forced to hurl threats and even commit murder. Even to go as far as summoning the spirit of a pimp named Slickback. To slap fire at Dragan on route to Dynasty and move forward to his end goal. Please pray for the soul of this bitch and guide my pimp hand and make it strong, Lord, so that she might learn a whole place. Amen. Shut up. You sound like a cow farting. Having a moment of remorse for the second time as he reflects on the sinister nature of why he has come to this innocent town. Sacrificing these innocent townsfolk as a lure for Alucard to allow him entry into Dracula's castle. It was within this moment that I truly understood this was the answer to make up for the absence of Grant, linking Greta Dynasty as the stand-in for Grant Dynasty. Like, whatever. Anyway, Saint Germain is a fantastic actor. I mean, after a lifetime of performances throughout Europe, he better be able to convince Greta and Alucard that he is harmless, and it's not until the attack on the castle that his true intentions were made aware. Almost giving out again, during their trek to the castle as Alucard wishes him luck in rejoining his beloved, ironically meaning that this is the end of them all for this to be achieved. He even drools and gawks at the sight and mere thought that he is in the presence of Castle Dracula and the Belmont Hold. Funny thing, 
that Alucard did not recognize that Saint-Germain knew a bit too much about their current location. But I can't blame the man for being too enamored with a fine piece of melanin in Greta. At this point, finalizing the plans with Hector and Varney, he is ready and determined to play God. Willingly explains his plan to Alucard and Greta with no fear of consequences, stating why he is using Alucard's parents and the dead town folk to open the door to the infinite corridor like a stereotypical villain. What possible reason? Two reasons. The woman I love is lost somewhere in the infinite corridor. And I am an alchemist. I seek the perfection of knowledge, the achievement of the great work, the magnum opus. It is at this point that we see the culmination of him being fully dedicated to the science of alchemy, with no limits and barriers of human morality as a god would, until his fateful meeting with Varney and is made aware that he was a pawn in death's game the whole time, being cornered into preserving his life and reclaiming his lover against resisting his inner greed and need to do what is right for the world. And it's only in the end of it all that he realizes what he has done and performs a redeeming act that allows Trevor to stop the Rebus ritual and foil Death's plan. But unfortunately, it came at a price, his life and potential for everlasting love. The life of Saint-Germain is a lesson for those who seek infinite knowledge, but do not understand in hindsight the ramifications of gaining too much they cannot handle. Once a humble seeker and practitioner of the alchemic sciences, to transform, combine, and create with truth. Ironically, it was the chaotic nature of love that threw him down the rabbit hole, sinking deeper and deeper into the abyss of acquiring infinite wisdom, which proved the old saying that knowledge is power, and simultaneously proving that absolute power corrupts. And thus, concluding the character analysis for the Netflix Castlevania series with Saint-Germain. Let me know all your thoughts on Saint-Germain and how he was portrayed on the animated show in the comments. I had to conclude 2022 with a banger for y'all. And thank you all for showing me so much love on these breakdowns. But this isn't the end. It's only up from here now come 2023 and beyond. With that being said, I frequently see a lot of suggestions for future content in the comment section for different series and mediums. So. I'd like to announce that I have officially launched a Patreon for the channel to provide you all with the best unaltered and raw content that I can make without restrictions that come with YouTube. For as low as $3, you can support my work and or upgrade to a higher tier that will offer more options like exclusive polls for members. That way I can generate the content many of you want to see moving forward. With enough dedicated members, things like a dedicated Discord or even weekly live discussions can take place on the channel if you all wish it so. The link to my Patreon will be in the description and in the first comment pinned to the top. Otherwise, continue to make suggestions in the comment sections or in my community tab. The more you all let me know what you want, the more I can dedicate to giving you the content you'd like to see by liking, sharing, and engaging with the content. And if Patreon is not your forte, you can always subscribe, drop a super thanks, and I can possibly set up a membership down the line here on YouTube for those who would like to strictly engage on this platform. Again. Thank you all, and let's continue to build moving forward into the new year. You know the vibes. It's Kaiser Kuz Appreciate you. <laughs>